Ah, 50-50s. The ultimate RNG element of Minesweeper. Some people hate them so much that they completely abandon the classical version of the game to play deterministic versions, in which any forced guess is absent. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely worse things in Minesweeper than a 50-50 guess, but not a single one of them is as annoyingly common. Every time you start a game by clicking a corner, you have a 4% chance of encountering one of these ugly long things, 24% chance of coming across one of these hideous squares, and lastly a 32% chance of coming across an H, T or an L structure. And if you're particularly unlucky, you can find these monsters in many other different shapes. But I'm not here to traumatize you, you know, they say 50-50s are the great equalizer, in the sense that before them, an expert sweeper is just as hopeful as a novice player. But what if I told you that there is a way to deal with them, that there is a way to break them? Fellow sweepers, this is the position we are going to analyze today. To determine what's the best way forward in this position, we are going to use the same method we used in the previous video. If you're already familiar with it, you can use the timestamp to skip ahead. Basically, we are going to use two parameters to evaluate how good each approach is. Probability of losing, or finding a bomb, and probability of progress, where progress is a situation in which the next click can be performed in a totally safe manner. Revealing a zero counts as progress, even though the adjacent tiles are revealed automatically in most versions of Minesweeper. The score we are going to use is probability of progress divided by probability of losing. The more probable progress is, the better. The less probable exploding is, the better. Now, in this position, there's no way forward that doesn't involve some risk. These numbers represent each style's probability of containing a bomb. Many here decide to click another corner of the board and see if they can manage to get a better opening and continue from there. We'll call this approach the newbie. We can map the score of the newbie onto this graph. This approach gives you about 20% probability of exploding and about 49% probability of progress. The score of the approach is represented by the inclination of this line. These would be scores higher than the newbie score and these would be scores lower than it. Now you might be wondering, how on earth do you do better than the newbie in this position? Well, you can't, but you actually can. I mean, it's impossible, but it can be done. Uh, let me explain. The second approach we will consider is this one. Now, this approach doesn't seem all that promising at first glance, especially if you map it onto the graph. Yuck. But you see, this approach, this click, is breaking a 50-50. What does it mean? Suppose you click this tile, Either one of these two things can happen. You can either explode or survive. Now, if a bomb is present here, you'll notice that there would be a forced 50-50 guess structure. This is a structure in which you know that in these two tiles there is only one bomb, but no tile in the board can give you information about which one of the two tiles contains the bomb. So eventually, you will have to take the 50-50 guess. So, by clicking here, half the times you explode, you would have done so regardless. Now that we know this, if we account for only avoidable risk and we map our approach onto the graph, you can begin to appreciate that even though it doesn't seem that good, it's not looking outright atrocious as it did before. We'll call this new approach the breaker. Now, after calculating all the ramifications of the two approaches and calculating the newbie's secondary safety and progress and the breaker's secondary and tertiary safety and progress, what we have is this graph. 
As you can see, the breaker catches up by the second move and also seems to produce on average more progress and less losing after the third move. Moreover, the breaker gives you an opportunity of finding progress by risking a less than 20% chance of losing. The progress you find in the breaker line is also better in my opinion because it comes from the tiles that expand more than the corner ones. That is why I think the breaker is the best approach. To be fair, clicking a corner has in fact too a chance of breaking or preventing 50-50s. But that is very unlikely. The most probable ways you'll break a 50-50 are these. Also very importantly, every time you break a 50-50 by clicking a corner tile, you won't get progress, and you'll be forced to guess and risk again in another corner. Ok, now let's see how to play the breaker by seeing this approach's main or most probable ramifications. By clicking here, you can find progress via a 1 or an 8. If you instead find a 3, 4 or a 5, you should change course and go back to the newbie approach by clicking another corner of the board, since making progress here is very unlikely. Speaking of unlikely, you may rarely reveal a 6 or a 7 tile, in which case this is the best way forward. If you get stuck in this tunnel, you simply resort to the newbie. If not, you should be getting progress at the end of it. Finally, if you reveal a 2, which is the most probable thing that can happen, you proceed with this move. If you find anything that is not progress via another 2, you go for this move afterwards. As you can see by these probabilities, that is always the move with the highest score. Now, remember these percentages from the start of the video? I have to thank MS Coach for helping me with those. He has a solver I use for instantly calculating probabilities in guessing spots with 100% accuracy, but it has many other different features that can help you improve your mastery score. If you want to check it out, I leave the link to it in the description. Thanks to all for all the support you've shown in the previous video. Hopefully, you enjoyed this one as well. Bye for now, I'll see you on the next video.